Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all you out in Cal Jam land. Another exciting pre-Cal Jam podcast sponsored by our amazing friends over at Vox Life. Jay Dollywall stepped up to the plate big time again this year to support the biggest mission on the planet to change the direction of where we're headed and preserve the future for our children. I've got two amazing guests on the line, Dr. Jay Davidson, all the way from Puerto Rico, bro. And Todd Watts, where are you? You're up in Idaho or something? I'm in Idaho, Boise. Yeah, see, I got it right. Look at my brain's it's working. The detox it's virtually market. like the same thing as Puerto Rico, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. maybe not temperature-wise. Plus, the waves <laughs> are probably better in Puerto Rico, according to my friend Sebastian Bonnet. But we're going to talk a little detox today. I mean, again, some chiropractors get a little bit, I don't know, a little tissy sometimes when you talk about anything other than the physical subluxation. But again, BDJ Palmer and DD Palmer weren't actually practicing in a time right now where we have the highest level of toxicity in this biosphere that has ever been. We have the most toxic population on the planet. And again, if you're talking ADIO above, down, inside out, all this crap that's coming from outside is affecting this. It's creating a subluxation, a decrease in that life vibration, allowing disallowing innate to express at 100%. So what we're talking about is adjusting those chemical subluxation and eradicating that interference, allow innate to function at a higher level. The three T's, toxins, thoughts, and trauma are th something that our four founders talked about. Welcome to the show, Dr. J and Dr. Todd. Who wants to go first? Well, I'll, I'll dive in first, uh, Dr. J here, with the toxin side. So I uh, had a and high You guys volume. are from Cellcore. I should have introduced you as that. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cellcore Biosciences Practitioner Line. and Another uh, one get... of our sponsors again this year. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we just appreciate the mission that you're on. I mean, it is. Uh, we appreciate somebody that actually doesn't hold back and uh, speaks the truth because in this modern day age right now of censorship, I mean, it's we're coming into a golden age, but it's rough riding as we get there. So we want to be obviously the light uh, that enters that. So as we look at, you know, what's holding people back, like you said, thoughts, traumas, toxins. And as we look at, okay, structural chiropractic above, down, inside out, like that's the principle that I was trained on. And that covers the physical side. When my wife nearly died after my daughter was born about seven and a half years ago, it was like, she was getting adjusted. She was doing her rehab. We were living what we thought was a proper lifestyle. But what we didn't realize was that there was toxins and that there was infection that we hadn't taken care of. And that was our big clue. And for two years before she crashed, she couldn't fly in an airplane, massive anxiety. Should have been a big enough warning sign for us, but it wasn't. Then she almost died after my daughter was born. And it just completely shifted to, okay, I know about you know chemicals and and detoxing heavy metals, but clearly I don't understand it enough. And so it forced me into this Lyme disease world, into this detoxification world. And so oftentimes our mess becomes our message. And just being open to the fact that, hey, there might be something else that I need to offer my clients. Be, and I don't want to say just besides an adjustment, because I've had people get their hearing back from adjustments. So I'm, right, right. Like, we're, I'm, not, we're not in any way refuting the, the miracles of chiropractic. We're just saying, that the, the era is different than BJ and Dee, Dee lived in. And sometimes we need to address other subluxations. And again, there's doctors that don't want to do that. I get it, but don't diss those that are going the extra mile. And again, a lot of it, it's not like I, my practice is any different. It's just, I teach them in a workshop how to do this stuff and then they go home and do it. So it's not that hard. Yep. 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 Same thing I did in my chiropractic office was teach about lifestyle things, toxicity, how to detox, do it on their own and pick it up in the office. And just another piece to the care. But as you look at it, over 85,000 chemicals have been uh, registered by the US, hardly any of them tested, hardly any of them tested on how they interact with each other. And it's like, we're just basically a ball of toxins. So how do we detox? And basically not much has changed in the last 20 or 30 years until we've come along. And I know it's kind of a bold statement to say, but the popular thing to do is, oh, once I build a following, once I build a list, now I'm going to slap a, you know, my own label on a product from some of the manufacturers that sell products, which is mostly the same stuff out there. When um, the reason I got into this with Dr. Watts is because innovation and scientists that are actually creating things. Uh, our scientists, for instance, got a death threat back in 2008, 2009 from Monsanto because this product was binding glyphosate. And so he went in MIA because he's like, I don't want to deal with this. Well, 10 years later, 2019, we're in this place now, almost coming in 2020, we're in this place now that it's a lot more okay 
to be voicing the message about glyphosate in Monsanto. They don't quite have the same power like they did back 10 years ago. So we're here definitely on a mission to change the way people get results in their practice, but also focus on the protocol order. And that's something that Todd and I have spent just a lot of time with, which I think we can add value to as well. Perfect. So you guys were getting death threats too? Our scientists uh, back, back 10 years ago uh, had people told them to shut it down. Right. It's, it, cause it's funny that you guys are a security sponsor because the reason we have security now is because <laughs> we were getting death threats and I, you know, I kind of like that kind of stuff, but we had to have uh, bodyguards for Suzanne Humphreys. And then we yes. had to wand everybody and search everybody's purses. And it was like, shit. And the first year we did it, we had lines out. The, so we had to really kind of change the whole security to where people have to walk through gates just like they do at the airport to check people because when you're going against big bro big bro don't like that shit you know and again glyphosate monsanto was a huge huge beast and he, they went after you but now we see a lot of people are going after monsanto and they even had to change their name from monsatan to now bear to try to like escape all this but it's again when you're going again, and the whole thing, I don't know, you guys know not much about GMAC, uh, GC mask. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's another one. A lot. I think that's what a reason a lot of these doctors were getting off. It was the fact they were detoxing people, especially these autistic kids, but also uh, turning people around with cancer again. So I don't know if we can say that, but we just did. I didn't say, you didn't say, it. I said, it, so. you know, it, it goes back to the Nogales enzyme and some of the vaccine yeah. issues of that stuff being in the vaccines and then finding that out. And, and, and so exposing that stuff is very dangerous for all those doctors that died right. and that were involved in that research. Right. And that's what I, I, I gleaned from that. But you know, it's interesting. You know, I've gone to chiropractors. I'm 51 for since probably at least 40 years. My whole life I've gone down that route. And uh, in my own journey, uh, being very active and being um, just athletic and always doing sports and working out, uh, I, I had went through my own health journey and I had chronic headaches for a long time. And I got adjusted all the time. And when I come to learn that, it was going back to, for my case, parasites were the problem that were causing the headaches. If I stopped, I stopped dairy altogether, my headaches went away. But when I cleared, when I cleared the parasites, then somebody, then that, then that completely got my headaches gone. And so what I realized is there are deeper things going on and happening within that process. I don't know. Is so, that me or you guys? Oh, that's, that's you. You. That's me. I don't even know what to do. Somebody's calling in, calling in on one of your lines there, Google Hangouts or something. All right. Hopefully, I'll hang up. <clears throat> it's Big Brother. Yeah. Is it? It's probably, probably Big you. Brother. <laughs> All right. So, so the detoxy part, what I've learned in this whole process, Billy, is it's been amazing to hear and see all the people that that get a chiropractic adjustments that then go down the route of detoxing and cleansing their bodies, whether it's infection, but it's all these herbicides, pesticides, heavy metals, um, their life changers around because of that problem. Right. It, you, I can, I'll see if I can get this off. This is driving me nuts. Yeah. We can splice it back. Don't worry about it. Of course, it stopped as soon as I leave the room. You son of a bitch. They might try and start, they might try and call you again though. Nobody ever calls me. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So let's have you go over that again. So okay. you were having headaches. Sorry about that. Yeah, I've gotten, a chiropractor. I've, I've gotten a chiropractor for the last 40 years. I had phenomenal chiropractor when I was younger. Uh, in fact, on, on a weekend with a basketball, I would go in between games to my chiropractor getting adjusted because that's how much I believed in, in chiropractic. So um, in, in going through my health journey later on, with some illness stuff in my 30s, I started getting a lot of joint pain, headaches all the time, and realized that diet was a big deal. And dairy, when I got off dairy, my headaches subsided. But then in the exposure I got to it, it was horrible. And so I had to go get adjusted and then you know, get migraines. When I cleared infection out, which was, in my case, parasites, that all completely went away. And, and then all my fatigue went away, all my joint pain, uh, it, you know, going down the Lyme disease route that I went and the parasite and Epstein Barr, heavy metal toxicity, clearing all these things out allowed me to realize that it's more than just the adjustment, it's the toxins and also, of course, the, the thoughts, which can be the emotions and the spiritual 
you know, warfare that people can go through. So it's, I, I'm a big believer in trauma thoughts and toxins. And I think it's all the above that make us amazing. In today's situation with chiropractors, my belief is everybody's so toxic and has, and, and have so many health problems that we need to be, be able to help at multiple levels. Right. And I'm going to riff on that myself. I mean, I'm be, I've been getting adjusted and I get adjusted. I mean, I don't care what people think. I get adjusted three or four times a week. I have three different chiropractors. I get upper cervical adjustments. I get diversified adjustments. And I was having huge issues with, for me, it was brain fog. And was, that scared me because my mom was, went through Alzheimer's right before she died. And I, I don't want to end up like that, man. I, that's like my biggest fear is my brain not working. And I was having some really big time memory issues. And I was having huge sleep issues and anxiety. And I, I mean, really, I was kind of freaking out about it. And when I did the detox program, the first thing that I noticed, I was sleeping better. And when you sleep better, everything works better for me. And that anxiety went down and my memory came back. I mean, I was having a hard time remembering patient's name. And I really take, you know, I, I, I really respect the fact that I can remember so many names that I remember. And when I started losing that, I was starting to freak out. And again, there's things that Melody's helping me with, your beautiful wife. Uh, That's my sister-in-law. Oh, sister, I'm sorry, sorry. I always get you guys mixed She's married to my identical twin. We look just alike. Okay. So, <laughs> well, sorry about that. Melody, oh, you're, I should you're, just you're Melody. Okay. She's awesome. Uh, you know, I don't have everybody's family treat out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I get it all the time because we're identical twins, right? So, Are you guys really? It. Yeah, he's two okay, minutes older well, than me. Okay, then it's easy. Okay. It's easy. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, plus, you both have the same last name, so that makes it We do. Okay, if you had different last days, it'd be easy. But she helped me with the friggin' essential oils, and I, you know, I thought that stuff was all a little bit, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't really have a lot of faith in it. And again, I do CBD too, and I mean, I literally sleep better than I have in my entire life right now. And I feel for people to understand that, to how does toxicity affect that? I mean, I have an idea, but I want you to iterate what you're, I learn a lot from these podcasts too. So how does the toxicity affect sleep in your opinion? In my opinion, what happens is we have neurotransmitters that are made and toxicity comes in and can shut down some of the pathways that then drive anxiety uh, that don't allow us to make GABA. We, we go high amounts of uh, glutamate or we're not converting to dopamine, so we're getting high amounts of epinephrine and adrenaline. Uh, there, there's multiple things. I look at infection um, as well, the, but the toxicity will, will definitely disrupt the, the neurotransmitter issues. And some people have mentioned, too, that the probably one of the most uh, attacked, like the, the pineal gland in the brain, which it has a lot to do with circadian rhythms, uh, maybe if, because it's, there's no blood-brain barrier there, so it's going to easily those metals are going to attack. I know fluoride is a huge, has huge effects on the pineal gland. So why don't, can we go through a little bit of the protocol and what we do with the program? Heck yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the pineal glands get definitely getting attacked by halogens, you know, the fluoride side being in water supply. And that's really what's creating a modern day epidemic of iodine deficiency. The fact that iodine is not in soil that's getting in food now because the improper, if you will, growing things. But now we're, you know, buying electronics or buying furniture that's got brominated flame retardants on it that's got, you know, a competitor halogen of iodine or drinking water with chlorine or fluoride that's not filtering. And again, these are all, you know, reactive halogens that basically outcompete iodine. So that's actually one of the things that we looked at on a protocol side is, well, why do people... Everybody needs iodine, but why do some people react? And it's like, well, is it Hashimoto's? Is it autoimmunity? It's like, well, what are we doing actually to bind on to the bad halogens to now make actually an empty spot where iodine is supposed to go, where, right. you know, these chlorine, fluoride, bromine, if you will, are actually occupying the iodine molecule. And that's actually what we figured out on a protocol side is actually with the bioactive carbons um, program for halogen binding in the iodine product, it helps to empty that receptor and then put the iodine in. And all of a sudden it changes everything where it's like, oh, everybody's not reacting to iodine. Huh? That's interesting. So, as we take a step back and look at infection and toxicity is such a massive epidemic right now. Let's assume the worst case, people are mold toxic, they have every chronic infection possible with parasites, and they have every toxin, heavy metals, glyphosate, radioactive elements, which I would argue is probably worse than anything else, uh, as much as I despise glyphosate and all that stuff. But Why do you say that? Just because uh, of the cancer? 
Uh, well, radioactive elements actually have a lot of energy to them. So there's three different categories. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. So for instance, if you're in an area where there's a lot of radon gas and they test it in the house, mm -hmm. um, typically that means that there's a ton of radium in the water supply. Well, radium is about a million times more energy than uranium. Uranium is what they use to power nuclear reactors. So radium, there's actually no current testing available for it other than the government. And the environmental working group found that 170 million Americans have toxic levels of radium in their water supply. Just looking at the state of Texas alone, 80% of Texas. So as we look at, okay, we need to be filtering our water, but it is filtering these radioactive elements or radioactive isotopes and radium, essentially it is an alpha emitter. So if you shower, it's not going to penetrate the top layer of the skin according to uh, you know, the alpha emitter radiation category. However, as soon as you swallow it, it's basically like taking uh, coal from a fire and swallowing it. And that energy is constantly being emitted and breaking DNA bonds and constantly basically shutting the body's healing ability down. And this is what really got me is why does it seem as if some patients or clients just don't have the ability to heal? I mean, for crying out loud, I was taught, and I fully believe this, that the body has the ability to heal itself. Why? Because that there's this, uh, there's this toxin that's emitted, emitting energy that's damaging the body, that's actually suppressing the immune system. And when you look at certain areas like in the Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, there's a whole thing called the radium belt in Wisconsin down through Illinois that just so happens to be very uh, correlating with Lyme disease area. It's like, huh, I wonder if that is suppressing the immune system and making more people more prevalent actually to these infections. So um, that's, that's a big area that we've, we've been exploring. It actually came from uh, Todd and, and him working with mitochondria and obviously our scientists as well too, coming out with a product that actually uh, gets into the mitochondria. So everybody always talks about heal the cell, heal the cell, but really it's actually getting to the mitochondrial layer that our brain cells, for instance, have 10,000, are supposed to have 10,000 mitochondria inside. So what we were finding with the Mito ATP. One brain cell has 10,000 mitochondria in it? Yes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So what we were finding with the Mito ATP, which is a, the mitochondria product, and it, I mean, it was like turning the mitochondria on, but what we were finding is all of a sudden we were seeing radioactive elements show up in people's testing. And it's like, huh, I think these radioactive elements are actually getting into the mitochondria and basically shutting them down. Uh, from that cellular level or mitochondrial level, if you will. So we've been figuring a lot of things out in the last year or two, uh, and it's been just a fun journey. But as you look and just say, okay, let's assume you or the individual you're talking about or yourself has every issue. What's the order that you proceed? And this is so critical because once you find out, hey, I have heavy metals, you don't just dive into it. I almost died from DMPS just diving into heavy metal chelation back in 2008 because I heard, oh, I had lead and mercury. It's like, no, there's actually an order uh, to prepare yourself for. Uh, same thing with Lyme disease. You know, that's one of the last things actually to get to. So really quick overview on the order is essentially you want to support the mitochondria. And for those practitioners that don't quite understand it, even experts, quote unquote, experts out there preaching, well, mitochondria is later because you're going to cause people to herx. You have to understand the mitochondria. Cause people to what? Uh, some, some people say don't support the mitochondria right away because you're going to herx, you're going to get a flare up of symptoms, you're going to start detoxing, you don't want to do that right away. But research, Dr. Bob Navio has shown that the mitochondria are actually the cell signalers inside of our cells that say when there's a problem, they actually communicate. Uh, and they're basically the canaries in the coal mine. So the mitochondria are what we need in order for our bodies to communicate cellularly to say, hey, there's an infection or there's a toxin. It's called cell danger response. And basically, mitochondria are huge with immune system, uh, and they're a big reason why people stay stuck and can't heal. So what we found is if you support the mitochondria right away, now you're actually supporting just the body's function overall, but you're actually giving the body a stepping stone to start moving forward. So you want to say anything on that, Todd? Yeah, so it's also going to help the liver to function better, right? Because now the liver that has 2,000 mitochondria per cell is going to work better. The, the kidneys, the whole, the whole body needs energy to perform enz enzymatic reactions. Your detox enzymes can't work well if they're not you know, supported with the ATP that's required for that action to move forward. So that's where we focus at the beginning on creating energy and opening up drainage. 
So the two, the first phase is you got to open up drainage before you detox. You got to create energy so your body can actually move things out of the body. It's it's a really a prepare phase that's super important to to not do it to to not ignore because when people have these infections and you start killing them with Lyme stuff or candida or mold, boom, they crash because of the fact that their their um, their drainage pathways aren't open. Yeah, and the pathways would just be making sure you're pooping, uh, liver bile duct, kidneys, skin, sweating, lymphatic system. You talked about the brain, Billy. Well, if you look at, okay, we know infection affects the brain. We know toxins affect the brain. But also what affects the brain is lack of drainage or the glymphatic drainage, right? Lymphatics. The, the, brain, the mm-hmm. brain connection to the lymphatic system, which you know we just discovered a few years ago. Like, oh, wow, it's amazing. It's all connected. Which is but most there's actually when we sleep, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're awake, those glial cells swell up. And then when you sleep and get in the deep sleep, then they can actually start shrinking and that's when they drain. But there's a requirement that there's an order. So if you're not pooping, if you will, everything in the body gets backed up. The next level from that is the liver bile duct system. The next level from that is the lymphatic. And then the next level from that would be like organs and tissues such as the brain. So for instance, let's say you had brain fog, headaches. You're like, wow, I got to detox, I got to kill pathogens. The first thing is you actually want to open up drainage and you don't want to start with trying to open up glymphatic drainage and brain drainage. You actually want to open up the colon, then the liver bile duct, then the lymphatic. And now it's like that free flowing funnel that can actually get going. So that's really kind of that core phase one is mitochondria and drainage right away. You got to get the river flowing, bro. You got to get that shit out, right? (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Because research has shown that when it's not flowing, then what happens is those toxins that are supposed to get dumped into the bile and the liver, they Mm -hmm. actually backflow. There's an emergency hatch that goes to your blood system and goes systemic. So now that damages kidneys, lungs. You start getting rash, pruritus, or which is itchiness on the skin, all these different reactions just simply because your drainage pathways aren't open. So we open yeah, those up right away. it out through the skin then, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So once that, once the drainage, uh, it, you started opening that up, uh, support the mitochondria. And sometimes the drainage isn't going to open up all the way, especially in the bowels, because one of those things that can clog up the bowels is parasites, which is why I love to call Todd the, the parasite guy. And I, I called him that like a few years ago and he got <laughs> mad and it's like, it's just stuck. So now is there like a, a like, can you have a stool sample that will, you know, objectively measure the amount of parasites that are there or I mean how would you discern whether you have parasites or not and I assume most people today have parasites and then again what amount of those parasites are symbiotic in nature I mean you go back to hunter gatherers days I'm sure they had their level of parasites as well sure Um, I think that part of the problem today is that our immune system in our gut is not working well and the reason why is because we have all those glyphosates, right? All those toxins that are exposed through our foods that we're getting in there that then kill off the good bacteria that, that uh, chelate the metal, you know, the minerals and stuff out of our gut and cause a proliferation of infection, whether that's fungus, uh, candida, a bad bacteria. Um, so then our immune system is overwhelmed. They can't deal with in the parasites. So it's different for them compared to us today due to toxicity. And that's why the whole, the whole process of is not just kill parasites, but it's also you have to detox and cleanse your body at the same time. So immune system comes up and the, 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 the symbiotic aspect of how is it symbiotic? It's, it's a parasite. True. Parasite take away. They do, they do not give life. They do not help like the bacteria do in, within our body. We're never going to get rid of all of them, but we need to get them down to a level that our immune system, immune system can actually handle and, and keep it at check and at bay because the immune system can be, according to all the research that's been done, suppressed, and then viruses take off. Like right. I've had people with herpes viruses, like cold sores up through their nose and mouth and all over for 10 years that, that did everything viral. And then when I treated parasites on them, all of a sudden now they didn't have it and they haven't had it in two years. It was because the, the TH2 immune system was, was downregulating TH1 and causing viral replication. And there's this whole scientific thing that we teach at our eco workshop that we do. So um, that's, that's really important to understand is, is that we teach all of the mechanisms of parasites, mold, lime, uh, heavy metals, radioactive stuff in our conference that we actually do uh, twice a year. And we go through all the science on it and the immunology on it and the biochemistry, what happens. And that's how we've set this whole thing up and this whole fa- the, the, the four phases that we go through to get people better. Right. Yeah. Well, just, I, don't, just, I read somewhere that parasites somehow limit the um, 
the amount of iron people have. Some people have overabundance of iron in the body. And I, I, I don't know where I read that. Some maybe one of Mercola's books or something. So that's why I thought maybe there's a little symbiosis because they're causing a little gut bleed and getting rid of some blood that way. So I, well, I think I, they advocated having your blood drawn in, in retrospect to having parasites. So I don't know, maybe that's not a symbiotic relationship. Maybe that's just life. So yeah, let's life, look at the, life. <laughs> the underlying reason why there's a modern day epidemic of parasites is because there's a modern day toxicity epidemic that's creating an environment to attract them to our bodies. So right. inevitably we got to clean the toxins up, but we first have to address the parasites because I detox heavy metals for a couple of years, not even figuring out I had parasites and looking back at all my symptoms, ADHD, uh, food sensitivities, you know, irritability, skin problems, digestive complaints. I mean, it would all link back to parasites, but parasites store heavy metals. So the first thing you want to do is actually address parasites so that you can clear those metals out, hopefully, when the parasites die, but some are going to release, but that's actually going to allow you then to clear the toxin out. If you just jump to toxin, you're not actually getting the toxins inside the parasites. The parasites are actually housing them. And the thing that I look at Billy on the research for parasites is people say, well, you know, you got to take parasites. Like you don't, you don't want to kill them. It's just like the microbiome. It's like, no, no, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Uh, if, if somebody thinks that, because when you look at the research and say, oh, I have Crohn's or I have ulcerative colitis and I'm going to swallow a pig whipworm or a, a rat tapeworm, uh, you know, like Ben Greenfield has done and things like that. Well, doesn't it, Asprey say the same thing that he eats all these friggin' parasites or worms or something? I, I mean, but I but let's that. think about that. What's their reasoning behind it? The, so the the what studies have shown or case studies have shown is that somebody that's about to get their intestinal tract cut out from these intestinal diseases, if you will, or conditions, that putting a foreign parasite that cannot replicate within a human into the GI tract distracts our immune system enough so our body stops attacking the GI tract. This never gets to the underlying solution. Essentially, all it is is it's basically looking like a pharmaceutical, but it's a but it's the ingesting of parasites. So right. parasites have a place of saving an intestinal tract, if you will, from a crisis and a symptom, but that doesn't equate to we actually want to ingest parasites. On the clinical side, the more that we clear out, the better off people are going to get. So by just thinking that we want to ingest parasites based on that literature is false, that you're just not getting to the source. Why is Crohn's or ulcerative colitis there in the first place? It's not because you're missing a rat rat tapeworm or pig whipworm, even though that can help calm the symptoms down, there's still that underlying thing we want to get to. All right. Let me ask you this. So we start, we want to start the protocol. Uh, what do we do as like a precursor as far as diagnostic discern? Maybe number one, obviously the level of heavy metal toxicity. I don't know if there's ways to discern the level of parasites in the gut or anywhere else for that matter. And what other things are going to be toxic? And how do we measure that pre and post if that's something that we do with your program? I, I run multiple tests. So I do a comprehensive blood panel. Okay. Uh, I look at a, a lot of times an organic acid. I, I'll do a heavy metal el essential element test. Um, I, and I, then I also do, uh, uh, for some people, the mycotoxin test, uh, the GPL tox, environmental toxin test. So I, I do some panels there to see where they're at. So I get a okay. good overview. And then I have multiple assessment forms that we have at CellCore for practitioners. And these assessment forms address, okay, um, you know, what's your rating on parasites? What's your rating on Lyme, Bartonella, Babesia, uh, viruses, heavy metals? So there's a symptom thing because I think a lot of that goes back towards symptoms because we can't find it on a test. Testing isn't good at this time. Right. And the best test for parasite thing is, is, is you hold your fingers up right here below your thumb and you check to see if they have a pulse. And if they have a pulse, they have a parasite. And um, everybody has one. I know. Everybody has them. Yeah. So, so it, it's, it really goes back to just the symptoms. I, I look at all the research I've done on, on looking at sleeping, for example. You got toxoplasmosis, gondii, you, you know, toxoplasma gondii, which can be from eating pork or being around a cat and changing kitty litter. They tell a pregnant woman not to change the kitty litter because it could damage the fetus. But what if we get it? And if your immune system's compromised, well, it shuts down. It shuts down GABA, so it shuts down the uh, GAD, uh, the GAT67 enzyme. So you can't make GABA. So then you have more anxiety, more stress. Uh, men tend to be more aggressive. Women tend to cheat, um, which is funny uh, on the research, but it's actually valid research on on that process. Cheat. So, 
Yeah, they say they take more risk, right? Because okay. of the fact that you don't have the GABA, these people take more risk. They have more anxiety. And on the, test, on, on the study, it said men tend to be more aggressive because of that, and women tend to cheat. So I was, I was doing it at a conference, and I was laughing, I mean, but it was true. It's funny. Um, so, so there's a thing with exposure to these, these parasites, these infections, whether viruses or Lyme, Bartonella, a lot of these things can actually change the chemistry in their brains as well. And we don't blame everything just on a heavy metal, right? Or everything just on Lyme. It's a combination of all these things that are the problem. And where it goes back to is mitochondrial function, allowing our bodies to work properly the way it needs to. Right. And then like we were talking earlier, we, and we don't want to get into the diet aspects, but if we're going to be eating whatever diet it is, whether it's the carnivore to the veganism, you want to make sure your sources of your food are not only organic, but also, again, you mentioned, just mentioned pork. I, I mean, pork scares me for that reason, that there's a lot of parasites. But then again, you also look at us pescatarians. There, I'm sure a lot of the fish, especially sushi, is loaded with parasites as well. Yes. Okay. For sure. I've even seen it my first hand when they carve up a fish <laughs> on the boat. I'm going, I don't think that worm's supposed to be there, is it? <laughs> so again, you may think that you're this healthy pescatarian, but if you're eating parasites and raw fish, you're probably not doing yourself a lot of good. Well, you just got to understand that parasites are found in all foods. So they're notorious to be in salad bars. So you go to a Whole Foods and you're only eating plant-based foods. Well, just from improper food handling, parasites can be in there. Parasites can be spread when somebody sneezes. You can sneeze out a pinworm egg. So it's not just bacteria and virus that you're, you know, covering your mouth for. Parasites are found in soil. They're found in water supply. They're found in food. Obviously, they're found in, uh, you know, undercooked meat, if you will, and meats. But they're also found in uh, plants as well, too. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's under the assumption that parasites are everywhere. And unfortunately, because of the amount of toxins, it's creating an environment to allow them to thrive. So going back to the order, it's all about mitochondria, opening up the drainage support system, if you will. And that's going to come along with you for the journey. Then you're implementing parasites, really going at a gut level. Then you go systemic. And it is amazing the things that people get out of them. We've had people um, get, Todd's had people pull worms out of their mouth. Uh, out of their That's nose. Be sexy. Oh, out of their nose too. How about out of their sphincter? You ever get that happening? I'm sure. You oh yeah, all, uh, all the time. The really long ones too. It's like long. I just had a gal. <laughs> I just had a gal. I want her new formula as a practitioner. She says she did did it, and within a day and a half, she pulled something that was five arm lengths out of her. Maybe. And she's like, it was a tapeworm. With scales. Yeah, With she scales? Said, Does it she felt like it was scales, little... but it, it was a tapeworm because it was segmented um, on that and. It, it, yeah, it's, cr it's crazy what people are, are, are doing with our rinses out of their nose, uh, people pulling them out of their ears. Um, I've had, Jesus, I'm going to have I've, nightmares. I've had women pee them out, you know, because they're dead. You know, they, they come out um, from the bladder. It's just, it's, a, it's amazing. But that's what not about in the poop? Do you see a lot of stuff like in the poop too? Oh, yeah, tons. So it's always good to do that diagnostic check right after that morning evacuation, the morning defecate, or as you call it, the scientific term is poop. You, we don't want to check your poop in the bowel morning. movement. <laughs> right? I mean, I always, I've always done that because I'm a guy. I mean, you always want to see, well, wow, look, look, what, sure. look what I created this for me. But you'll actually see it when you break that sucker up. You might see some. Uh, well, you might. You might. Only 30% only of parasites are visible by the naked eye. So just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. But so tell me, I, I need to get my microscope in the bathroom in the morning, too. Is just, yes. Like, do some staining or some stuff. <laughs> When you see them, I mean, that, that's your positive test right there. You know, right, unfortunately, right. as you're looking at some of the labs out there doing uh, testing, parasites, when they die, certain ones will actually release an enzyme that dissolves their body. So they have this, uh, if you will, intelligence in them to, you know, not be detectable. Uh, also, just there's over 100 different species that affect humans, and there's no lab yet that's able to detect all that, even PCR DNA methods, let alone the fact that the sample that comes out doesn't mean that in that sample, every parasite in your body is going to come out in that sample. There's parasites that are systemic that aren't going to show up in your stool, let alone a lot of the parasites in the stool are going to be in that liver bile duct area. They're going to be in the small intestine and even just doing like a colonic and like, well, I don't have parasites. It's like, no, they're up higher typically in your GI tract, but then parasites are systemic. So uh, when you do see them come out of your stool, I mean, that is like the craziest feeling ever. I had to pull, and, and this is how I've 
how uh, Todd and I became friends. He gave me a Mimosa Pudica seed and it looked, it was in, it, it was a pharmaceutical bottle, basically looking thing. I'm like, what is this? He's like, no, it's an herb. I'm like, this looks like a pharmaceutical bottle. He was having it, the herb hand encapsulated at a compound pharmacist. I'm like, okay, I'll trust you. 16, 17 days later, I'm pulling roundworms out of my butt, Ascaris uh, lumbricoides, you know, they were basically hanging from me. They were dead, hanging from me into the toilet bowl water. And just, I'm like, my life changed. I'm like, wait a minute. If I, a relatively healthy guy living the quote unquote, you know, healthy lifestyle, eating well, exercising, getting adjustments, I mean, doing all that. And I have worms, who else does? And that just opened a whole new world for me in the Lyme disease world that got great results. Because here's the thing, mold, uh, can be inside of parasites, heavy metals inside of parasites, viruses inside of parasites, let alone the whole fact that when there's a chronic parasitic infection, it shifts the immune system to TH2 dominant, like Todd was saying, and allows viruses to replicate like mad. So parasites are first, then that allows you to detoxify chemicals in the body, heavy metals, radioactive elements, and then that allows you, as you progress through, that'll allow you to eventually clean up the chronic infections like Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, uh, you know, these other viruses as well, too. So that's really the the order as we look at it. So no matter what somebody comes in with, like, hey, doc, I've been diagnosed with this, what do I do? It's like, you follow the order, you open up drainage pathways, you support mitochondria, you go after gut parasites. I thought you support you do... the mitochondria first. No, you, we, those are those are combined together. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. In in the people that are really sensitive, which is a very small fraction of the population, but unfortunately there's a lot of those now, more of those people coming, when it, we're really sensitive to everything, mitochondria first, then drainage, but generally it's most people, phase one is mitochondria and drainage at the same time. Okay. Then it's gut parasites, systemic parasites, so you're going deeper, then it's starting to push detoxification. And as you pull toxins out, because heavy metals will protect will be part of biofilm, for instance, which will then protect infection. So you want to peel back these toxins that are creating biofilm, protecting things like Lyme disease. And Lyme disease has been shown in research to live inside of parasites. So if you don't deal with parasites first, you're not going to get to the toxin and you're not also going to get all the way to the infection. And really, as you just understand that order, that changes everything. And how long does your typical protocol take? I've done other programs anywhere from 21 days to three months. Ours is a, a four months minimum. We usually have people go four months to a year okay. on that process, depending on where they are. Uh, the type of client that we see obviously is very, very sick. Have seen anywhere from 10 to hundred doctors. So our, our, what we've built it is for doing these whole processes. We believe the body should be able to handle and do things on their own. So right. we want to restore that mechanism. We want to store, restore the cell function and mitochondrial function. Uh, and by, by doing that, we, we get optimal health and optimal function of our organs, uh, of our, just, you know, our muscles, our tissues, everything. All right. Now I'm going to be starting the program as of the beginning of the year. I'm going to need some coaching. I probably, as this goes out, hopefully if anybody else is interested in doing the protocol with me, because when you do it with friends, it's always easier. Uh, I'm putting that message out there. So you guys will coach me through that, right? I mean, how hard is it to apply? I mean, I know I've got the, I got the boxes next to my desk that you guys sent me for Christmas and thank you. Uh, and I, the way I look at it too, is detoxification is something you're going to do. It's just like chiropractic. It's not like you, you get detox and you're done. You know, it's just like, yeah. you're going to go all right back out to breathe in the same crap. And <laughs> thank God I drink clean water from my company. Uh, it's a journey. Detox is a, is a journey. Right, we right, talk about it. Right. You know, it's just what you do for life, but um, we sent multiple boxes over there to, to you guys so that you could do this with your staff. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. And then I'm happy to walk you guys through that. Let's just do okay. a Zoom call and I'll yeah, take perfect. you guys through the process for everybody. Okay. Perfect. That sounds the, like a great. I mean, I'm not sure how many people I'm going to get on board. I don't have, I've got a pretty good team and they're mostly eat pretty healthy, but some of them can be a little toxic. You should have seen them at the Christmas party. <laughs> as soon as somebody pulls a worm out of their butt everything changes so, I'm, I'm gonna be the first guy that does that and i'm gonna, the, I'm gonna really dig that that's the kind of the, shit i like the key to understand <laughs> is each phase can take a different amount of time for different people so some uh, people sure. might have massive parasite infection and they're stuck on phase two and three for a while because they're clearing so many worms out other people they're super sensitive and they just have to go slower begin supporting the mitochondria, then move into drainage, then 
get to parasites and other people are so toxic that they, it takes time to detox. The body's not going to release all the toxins overnight. Otherwise it would be dangerous. So it's a, it's a, think of it as a marathon and not a sprint. It's the same thing right. with iodine. Like, Oh, iodine, I need it for, for my body. You know, every cell of the body needs it. Yeah. But you're not going to get it. You know, you're not going to go from deficient to optimal in a week. This is just about getting slow amounts in consistently. So your body can have what it needs. The same thing with detox that, you just want to slowly be pulling that stuff out because then, then you can still function normal. It's not, you're not incapacitated, bedridden, or you know, on the crapper all the time because you're pushing it so hard. This is right. very doable with people's normal lives. Yeah, you don't want to be on the crapper all day. That would be good. We'd get a lot of time. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me wrap this up with, I mean, we could go on for hours, but I yeah. know the average attention span of the uh, neurotoxic individual today is probably that of a gnat. Uh, which is about three seconds, <laughs> but and we've gone pretty long here, but that's okay. There's a lot of good content here. I had a highly respected individual who's been on my stage many times at Cal Jam. You may know who it is, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to drop any names here, but he's, he's, not bi he's not a big fan of detoxification. He says the body should be able to detox itself. Uh, what is your response to that question, even though this person also admits that the person didn't need vitamin D and now realize that people need to take vitamin D. Now I'm hearing back the other way that people don't need vitamin D. I'm just going to, after we're done here, I'm going surfing and work on my tan and get my own vitamin D. The only problem is I have a wetsuit on, so I'm not getting full maximized vitamin D absorption. But where are you at with people's, I mean, do you feel that everybody needs to detox or do you think you can just get that Atlas adjustment and, you know, innate's going to take care of the rest or where are you at with that whole perspective? I think that these toxins aren't just going to fall out of the body by itself. I think that it's really important to at least do the drainage and mitochondrial function because if you don't have the, the, the energy, the body is not going to uh, enable those enzymes to detox to work properly. Our whole goal with our, our system is to have the body to be able to do it on its own, right? And we, we have a product that helps to bind these and clear them out that have enough energy to pull it all the way out of the body. But ultimately, it's about getting that right balance within the body, the right function and the energy of the mitochondria. Most disease comes from mitochondrial disorders or mitochondrial right. dysfunction. Exactly. That's why we are, are such a big push into that science and research. And we're creating products that just do phenomenal things in that. And that science has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. It was the cat that was started with an, a W. What was his name that talked about all the mitochondrial stuff? Warburg or something? You guys don't. Otto know. Warburg talked about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I look at that comment and I'm, I just kind of giggle. Like I'm not, I'm not going to battle that because there's testing where they look at umbilical cord blood and there's 300 toxins in yeah, a exactly. brand new fetus baby. Like you're, you're, we share one atmosphere on this planet. Right. So what happens in China affects us. Fukushima, right. West Coast affects us and it's right. global. We are a global society, which just means that we need to detox. Yes, do we have a liver? We do. Do we have two kidneys? Yeah. Do they get overwhelmed? Frick, yeah. They get so overwhelmed, unfortunately, with the chemicals that we need to assist in that process. But like Todd said, you have to get to the source. People talk about it, but to actually get to the source, then that means you don't have to be on freaking 50 adrenal supplements for the rest of your lives. And as soon exactly. as you stop your crash, because you actually got to the underlying reason of what's suppressing the mitochondria. So mitochondria is where it's at. Then the next question is what's causing mitochondrial dysfunction? That's again, toxins and infection. And so if we keep that all in mind, it changes, it changes lives. Yeah, I think their response or their rationale was that the hunter-gatherer didn't need to detox, so we shouldn't have to either. But the hunter-gatherer wasn't breathing chemtrails or snorting glyphosate and getting or vaccines. Food. Yeah, vaccines or taking medications or eating shit food that's loaded with all kinds of crap. I mean, the reality is we live in a different world than the hunter-gatherer did. Even going back a hundred years ago to times of BJ Palmer, DD <laughs> Palmer, they, they were a completely different planet. The biosphere is different than it was a hundred years and even a hundred million years ago. So. Well, and digital toxins, 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, right? Oh, like, are we going to go there now? I, it, oh. it, 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 it's documented research, EMF damages mitochondria. The more metals you have so in the body, the more of an get, antenna you are. So it, right. it all connects. It all connects. When you get and the body the more well, metals the body you goes. have in, the bigger the metal, the bigger the antenna you are, right? I think that's mm -hmm. the whole objective of the, the agenda, which we won't get into the agenda right 
<laughs> and I'm old enough now that I can say shit like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. when I care about the kids. The kids are ones that are accumulating it sooner. I mean, I wasn't getting doused up when I was a kid. I mean, I got three vaccines. Now these kids are getting upwards of 72 vaccines loaded with all those neurotoxic metals in their brain. And let's put a little 5G. That's why I don't own a phone. I mean, I've done the research on that. Plus, I don't want a phone. I've watched all you people. Surveillance. I just, yeah, everywhere you go. Like, I, was, I was at the party, at our Christmas party, and his, uh, one, of, one of Kevin, my video guy for Cal Jam, was watching. He wanted to see where his wife was on the way to the party. I go, you can actually see where she is right now? He goes, yeah. I mean, this is an app. We, I mean, so I'm sure Big Brother sure has that app, knows where you are. And probably, oh. it's, it's kind of funny, too. It's like they listen to your conversation. I was actually doing a workshop in my office here because I do workshops here and I talked about, I was talking about Viagra or something. And then all of a sudden I go back to my Facebook page and I'm getting all these friggin' ads for Viagra on the side. Exactly. Go, Isn't that funny how they know what I've been talking about? So I don't know. Somebody's maybe listening. I'm a, I'm a conspiracy theorist maybe, but actually <laughs> I think I'm just a realist and people just don't want to face the music sometimes. All right. All right. Amen. Guys, anything in closing, I'm excited to have you guys there February 14th, 15th in beautiful OC. Yeah, come get guys, come to the booth, get your Mito shots. So we have our Mito ATP product. We're going to have shots there for you guys. Get that brain functioning well so you can pay lots of attention to the great content. Can I get some too? Yes. And how do you take the Mito shots? They're not suppository, you, are they? Or you put it in water, drops in water. <laughs> you already have some in your boxes. Okay, good. Well, thank you for reminding me of that. Good. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in that box though you know there's a lot of there is we'll go through it we'll connect we'll go through when you're ready that's what scares me the most when there's a lot of things to do but that's okay you should see my little i have a little uh, bedroom table in my room and i got all my essential oils in there and my serenity capsules and <laughs> my uh prostate stuff that i'm doing with salt pimento in there and i'll think i just got a whole and that's part of my ritual too doing all these things that table's got a lot of clutter on it so all right, you guys. God bless you. Thanks for being on Thank the call. You. We had some fun at the same time educating people, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. as I always say, if it ain't fun, I don't do it. All right. <laughs> Good Thanks, stuff. Billy. All right, Thanks, I'm going to go surfing now. Breathe All right, you love that aluminum and get in that mercury water and stuff. So get some Sounds more toxic. <laughs> Enjoy it. I love you guys. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Back at you. Bye.